Hello and welcome to Forgotten Games, my name's Fringlish and today we're going to be covering something that you requested quite a bit in the Discord, and it has absolutely nothing to do with Rebel Camps. What we're covering today is the Elite Trial event, more specifically the bonuses that you can get, the trial bonuses that you get from each chest, what to go for and how they affect your hero's combat power. How to get the most out of this event. Now for those of you who don't know, the Elite Trial event is something that pops up every so often and it's an amazing way to get certain rewards. By participating, you gain tokens, such as here, the Trial Tokens, which you gain either from your Alliance completing stages or from yourself completing points, as well as other small bonuses that you can then spend in the shop. These can allow you to get five easy Tyrion Lannister medals, as well as the Riverland Bandit medals, some Warrior Summons, we use the whopping 75%, friendship chests, advanced skill raffle tokens, as well as other resources. Just for the medals alone, it's absolutely amazing, but with the added bonuses, it's fantastic. Now, during this event, your alliance will have to clear many stages fighting different heroes. This is the same as the alliance boss, so each hero will have a specific weakness and strength you're fighting against. Jon Snow over here is an infantry hero, so, by using cavalry, we get 150% extra attack. Now, each stage you complete, there is an option to take out a bonus or a boss. Each boss you take out will give you a bonus that then applies to all your combats, depending on what you go for. As you can see here, we've completed the stage, so we can continue on further, but we haven't yet killed the boss. By returning to kill the boss, we get the option to go for the chest. When you click on the chest, you have to choose between three different items. Here, as we can see, we have a common, uncommon, and epic. All give us different buffs. By spending an increasing amount of diamonds each time, you can refresh these to get new ones. But what to go for? Here we can see Commander Attack 10%, Commander Strategy 15%, Commander Attack 20% for Cavalry, Infantry, and Infantry, respectively. It's rather tricky to know what to go for, so we're going to cover what they do and the general schools of thought. Each of these bonuses increase a different thing. Here we have Ally Spearman, Commander's Attack, 25% Legendary, which is the highest. We also have Commander's Strategy, 25%. We're going to select an attack, and what this does now, with my trial bonuses, I've got 25% Spear and 25% Infantry. This means that my Infantry heroes will have 25% more attack and my Spearman commanders will have 25% more attack. But what does that mean exactly? If we go and look at our commanders themselves, we can understand a bit more about how these stats get implemented. So the attack value of your hero is shown down here at 4,733. This means that with the extra 25%, I'm gaining an extra 1,200-ish attack, bringing my total attack to near 6,000. A nice increase, and that works for every infantry hero I currently have. Now here, if we had to choose between three different badges, again, we have a legendary, rare, and epic. The legendary, however, increases the commander's strategy by 25 for infantry heroes, allied bowman commander crit chance by 20%, or allied bowman commander prowess for 15%. In this instance, I'll take the prowess. So we'll just cover which, why, what each one of these does and why I'm going to take the prowess. So we have strategy 25, crit chance 20, and prowess 15. Prowess is basically defined as your base attack. Roughly, your prowess times 4 will be equal to your normal attack, your command times 4 will be equal to your defense, and your strategy is based on the skill potency. So what we see here is that by increasing it by 15% prowess, we're basically increasing it by 15% attack. Now there are skills that further increase attack that won't affect your bonus on prowess, so attack is sometimes better. Such as the skills here adds 3000 extra to attack. This means Sheila's base attack is 9700. So if I had 25% attack on top of that, it would mean her base attack will be closer to 12, 13,000. Whereas if I just got the 25% prowess, all that would mean would be that I get an extra 2,000 instead. So it'd be closer to 8,000 plus the 3,000, so 11,000. 
So it's rather a large difference when it comes to Sheila. However, an awful lot of commanders don't have these added attack bonuses, so therefore prowess and attack basically means the same thing. Strategy is another factor, and that in increases her abilities. Here, if we get 25% extra strategy, what it means, this skill here, which currently does 10,000, we we'll end up doing 12,500, an extra 25% damage on top of that. The problem is, while there's an awful lot of damage and can be a very useful, it only activates when you've filled up your might growth. And finally, you have the critical chance. Critical chance does an awful lot more damage, and especially for the high combat heroes, it has a good chance to deal damage. For example, Sheila would benefit enormously from the critical chance. However, another bow hero, uh, such as Sansa, would not benefit nearly as much. An extra 25% only taking her to 50 Overall, there are two different ways to increase your combat as much as possible. Either you're going to upgrade your troops' attack and prowess, increasing the base attack, doing more damage, or you'll increase the crit chance as well as the might recovery, which you can see here. By combining both of them means that they'll use their attack more often and the criticals might proc on those attacks, doing even more damage. The best things to go for are attack, then prowess, then, if you don't have a choice, critical chance. It's fairly cheap, to go up, and the amount of tokens you get means it's definitely worthwhile to try and get ethical later. Now I'm going to get all my tokens, and we'll see just how much of a difference it makes. Okay, now I've got most of my badges. What I ended up doing was focusing mainly on attack and prowess instead of strategy and might recovery. That means my cavalry now has about 100% extra attack, my spearmen and infantry are about 50% extra, and my bowmen extra 15. Now this is when I attacked a spearman hero without my badges. Using my infantry, here as you can see I have 3.3 million. And here you can see with the extra bonuses, or around 45% extra attack, I go from 3.5 to 4.3, and this is on a much higher leveled battle, so I'm even doing more damage against harder opponents. One of the best things you can do is find your best damage dealing combination, and then focus exclusively on that. With the amount of badges you can get, you can increase your attack by up to 200%. Either that, or if you're going for a very skill-based fight, it could be possible to use might and strategy. If you upgrade both of those, you can do enormous amounts of damage, but it is a rather late-term solution. You need very high bonuses for it to be worthwhile in the fights, as they only last 30 seconds long each, limiting the effectiveness of that strategy. hope this helps you choose your best trial bonuses and get ahead in the Elite Trials. If you like this video, please put a like down below, make sure to subscribe to the channel, and join the Discord where you can ask us to do the videos you want to see. Thank you very much for watching, have a lovely day, toodles.